Hello and welcome back to the Nash Metal Production Channel here on YouTube. Welcome to another album of the week. This, of course, is episode number 38. So, for episode number 38, and of course, this week's pick is another anniversary milestone. This, of course, go this anniversary uh, milestone here goes to the 30th anniversary of Alice Cooper's 18th studio album, Trash. Though, technically, uh, this would be the 11th album, at least as a solo artist, because technically, this is a solo artist as the character, okay? Because technically, albums from Prettiest For You up to about Muscle Love were pretty much Alice Cooper the band, or the Alice Cooper band, the best way to pronounce it. So, seven studio albums as the Alice Cooper band, of course, 11 studio albums as Alice Cooper, the solo artist. So with that, this of course again, uh, released uh, pretty much on July 25th of 1989. Trash pretty much was the album that put Alice Cooper back on the mainstream eye. Because uh, some of the previous uh, solo albums, at least uh, from like, I guess you pretty much say from the late seven or early 80s. I think pretty much starting in the early 80s up to about Constrictor or Dada. I would say probably up to Dada were definitely the most, were kind of considered the dark years for Alice Cooper. Especially when it comes to the sales and everything. Even though they probably did sell at least good enough. But when it comes to at least the sound, it was definitely a different era for Alice Cooper. I mean, when Alice Cooper started off doing his solo stuff, at least for this character and everything, and of course he had built and this whole persona with, of course, um, with 1975's classic Welcome to My Nightmare, which... Is definitely one, uh, one of the best sounds, uh, pretty much one of the best sounds ever come out in the 1970s, and for, especially for like the mid 70s, because that is a great freaking album. Of course, before pretty much that, and it was, it was uh, happening anyways because of some of the uh, the Alice Cooper band stuff. Especially, even though there were some classics there, especially when, when you when it came into, especially when it comes to the sales and the whole popularity really began with them, such as Love It to Death, Killer. Billion Dollar Babies and Schools Out and those albums were kind of pretty much the the height of the Alice Cooper band. But beginning with like Muscle Love, that was kind of the beginning of the downfall. Even though I think that album is pretty good, it's mostly also for the fact that the band, the whole, was like crumbling. So from there, Alice Cooper, or the character, uh, his real name is uh, Vincent Furnier. So building up that uh, this character and then decided to go solo with the pretty much taking the whole band that was backing up Lou Reed at the time, especially for for the uh, such as uh, Rock and Roll Animal and the live album, taking that whole line basically that whole backing band to pretty much create the new Alice Cooper as a solo artist to record Welcome to My Nightmare and Alice Cooper Goes to Hell. Definitely again one of Alice Cooper's most iconic records to this day. So, when it came to Bill Ann, after that, it seemed like there was a little bit of a slow burn, especially when you get the albums such as Lace and Whiskey and From the Inside, which I don't think were terrible albums at all. It's just that they don't quite live up to as much of, at least in my opinion, to Welcome to My Nightmare. Even though I don't mind some of Alice Cooper Goes to Hell, I just don't think it, it quite matched this, the, the magic. The whole chemistry and everything that was just completely that was given that was unleashed on welcome to my nightmare it was just it was like lightning strike twice basically and lightning just couldn't strike a third time i think with them such as alice cooper goes to hell and lace and whiskey and from the inside and so with there with that he decided to after what his rehabilitation because of that kid definitely was what with the from the inside. But then he went on that whole fucking coke binge or whatever. And so went to make the more... It's kind of the almost post-punk or new wave uh, record with uh, Flush the Fashion. Then of course uh, going into the sort of... Uh, like Though adding more of a rock feel again to it with uh, Special Forces. Which was not a bad album. 
But I, st- I think uh, Zipper Catch's skin is one of the best of that era. And Dad has a complete, a totally other uh, album. Not a bad album. Definitely unique. But it's one of those where you have to be, you have to kind of be in that kind of move. I almost want to appreciate it in a way, because it's such a different album. But we're not focusing on that, okay? I know I just went in a whole freaking back synopsis or whatever of the whole background and everything, and the whole albums and everything of Alice Cooper's stuff, basically. So, when he went all that, the, that sort of coke binge and everything, okay, I probably should definitely keep going with some of this. With that, they kind of go into to how why Trash is pretty much considered his comeback, really in terms of the the mainstream when it comes to the hits at least. Not as far as a comeback of returning to to the mu- music because of he seemed to have gone on the drinking binge with them such as was it Lace and Whiskey. Then after that, he goes to rehabilitation just from the inside. Goes on a coke binge, just starting with sounds such as maybe Flush the Fashion, Zipper Catch Your Skin, or Special Forces, and Dada. And after that, goes back into rehabilitation, and this time finally cleans himself, and comes back with a whole new band to do Constrictor. Which, for the time of, of 1986, that album was a popular record for time. And of course... Probably containing two of the al- that album's biggest hits, that being Teenage Frankenstein and, of course, The Man Behind the Mask. Which, of course, uh, the theme song for the sixth Friday the 13th movie, Jason Lives. Which, I ain't gonna go into it, but that's one of my favorite Friday the 13th films, and uh, that's a real fun one. Anyways, after that... And of course, with, with that whole band, he, he had, of course, uh, guitar player Kane Roberts and bass player Kip Winger. I forgot who the drummer was, but I definitely know who the drummer is on the album that follow Constrictor. That's, of course, his Razor Fist and Yell. Razor Fist and Yell was not a popular record for it, and at some, uh, for the time, it seemed to have been almost a slight dip. Even though I love the hell out of that album. I think it's a, a criminally underrated album. And definitely one of Alice Cooper's most metal records. Now, the drummer on that album, of course, is Ken Mary. Best known for drumming for bands such as Fifth Angel. And uh, uh, still is drumming for Fifth Angel since uh, they put out an album last year. Still, that uh, great uh, lineup, though. I think I, I think uh, Razor Fist and Nail was a very good album. But that lineup didn't last very much. So... Of course, uh, keyboard player Paul Hollowitz, of course, known as Paul Taylor. So here we go. All of that. It seemed like that everyone thought he was quite dipping for a bit. But thanks, I guess, to what? The Desmond Child and getting a whole new lineup, basically, replacing Kane Roberts, who, of course, went on to do his own sort of solo material. Kip Winger went and pretty much started Winger. And Ken Mary ended up playing with other bands like Bonfire, the German band, House of Lords, and a whole bunch of other bands. So, the new lineup here that began with Trash is John McCurry on guitar, Hugh McDonald on bass, Bobby Chouinard, if that's the best way to pronounce his last name, on drums, and Alan St. John on keyboards. This sound, of course... With, with Trash, definitely ended up being a mainstream hit. This sound brought him back to even to, to a a high that he couldn't have quite complete succeed, I guess, with Constrictor, even though that was more so of a warm-up because of he was just getting back, was all sobered up, and that album was a pretty good beginning for pretty much a whole new era and a whole new chapter within Alice Cooper's, pretty much his legacy here, and all that. Trash definitely uh, gained a lot of hits with this album, especially mostly with songs such as, well, Poison. Big hit on a, a platform such as MTV and so on. And of course being produced by Desmond Child, who of course was best known for producing albums like for Bon Jovi and so much other artists at, at the time. So, with that... The album definitely does have a sound, I guess, I wouldn't say Bon Jovi, but it definitely has a sort of MTV sound. Not really something that Razor Fist and Yell had. Razor Fist and Yell had a much more of a heavier kind of metal sound to it, whereas 
Trash definitely is at times taking out that sort of party sort of sound. So it's something almost like Kiss was trying to do. But I think Alice Cooper did it much better because he injected his own personality and it felt a lot more organic than something else just just trying to cash in on for the sake of it because they just because of they just want to be relevant for for the sake of it. But there, there's definitely p plenty of good songs. Now, this album is definitely a, a personal favorite of mine as well. And it definitely has a personal nostalgia to me because of, I think, was it my birthday of like 2005 or 2006? I can't, I think one of those years. This album, for sure, I got on that birth, one of those birthday along with Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band's Night Moves and Def Leppard's Yeah. But I definitely played those albums quite a bit, though. I definitely played Trash and the Bob Seger album a lot. So, but this sound definitely, every time, it brings back memories to that time. Because I listen to these albums a lot. So, definitely some, some favorite tracks on here, for sure. Definitely being, one of them being Spark in the Dark, Why Trust You, Betty Nails, which is actually... Uh, has some uh, guests playing from Kane Roberts comes back and actually does something again after uh, Razor Fist and Nail. So it's definitely a really cool sort of, I guess, one of the last things Kane Roberts did with Alice Cooper. And of course, Kip Winger, of course, does some additional vocals on I'm Your Gun, which is definitely a cheek. A cheeky kind of cheesy track, but I dig I dug that track. Uh, but well, that that also leads me into the various guest appearance on this one, which is definitely the thing that I, I guess you could say also kind of is one of those reasons why the sound might have also so well because or why it's so produced because there's quite a bit of guest musicians on this one, which from here on out. Ends up being a thing for Alice Cooper, especially if you get to the very some of the recent stuff from Alice Cooper, like "Welcome to My Nightmare" and "Paranormal." So, definitely, let's get into some of the the guest musicians on here. So here we got, of course, three actually three of Aerosmith on here because Steven Tyler uh, adds some additional vocals to the song "Only My Heart Talking." Which was a ballad for, for the album. And of course, Alice Cooper has done ballads before, okay? This is definitely the one that has more of an MTV, MTV feel. And you can definitely can hear Steven Tyler's uh, contribution. If you listen close enough, you can hear his iconic screaming and everything. Is just Or I say, iconic voice. Joe Perry, additional guitar playing on Al Sapphire. And of course, Tom Hamilton and Joy Kramer providing bass and drums to the track Trash, which then brings us, well, to, of course, John Bon Jovi. More references to Desmond Child's past producing us. So, John Bon Jovi, of course, uh, adds some additional vocals to the song Trash, which then also brings us to uh, Richie Sambora, who, of course, provides some additional guitar to Hell is Living Without You. Then, of course, of course, on that same track, we also have C. Lukather. Lukather, I think it's the best way to pronounce his last name, also provides some additional guitar playing to Hell is Living Without You, who, of course, is best known for playing with bands such as Toto and, and Boss Skaggs, and, of course, um, uh, Michael Jackson and Ringo Starr and his all-star band. All right, so, so I think that kind of goes through most of the famous names, at least the ones that I'm really familiar with the most on here. So with that, this episode has definitely quite gone on a little bit. Definitely one of the longer ones, of course. It's a 30th anniversary release. Again, 30 years, 30 years at this point for this album. And it definitely is the album that pretty much put him back to the mainstream eye, I guess you can say, even though... He had returned to the music scene with, with uh, Constrictor, and that was definitely a popular album. But this album, for sure, is the one that definitely gets the most play, I guess you can say. This is the one that definitely gets the, the biggest kudos or whatever. It's like it's the one that, that definitely is the one that uh, pops up to everyone's uh, head as the album that put Alice Cooper right back on the map. For sure. Again, not saying that albums like uh, Constrictor didn't, 
but thou but, but to some people they like to almost kind of forget a bit about constrictor i think from my issue i think uh, rap producer bayou hill i think he, i think he really I wouldn't say he underproduced it or overproduced it, but he definitely did a little bit too much and made it way too dry sounding. It's got, it definitely doesn't sound as punchy as I think with uh, the production work from Michael Wagner on Razor Fist and Yell. So with that, this is a, a pretty much a good album. Of course, Desmond Child will work uh, with Alice Cooper one more time after this with uh, Hey Stupid, another album that also was a mainstream hit when when it was released. And I'll soon get to that album uh, when the time comes. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed. If you have any thoughts and memories, whatever, on this album, definitely leave your comments below. And for those who haven't heard it, well, I don't know if I can say you've been living under a rock, but... It's definitely an album you probably should at least check out just to give it a listen. But for those who have, definitely comment away. So until then, this is Heavy Thrasher Sam out. I'll see you all later. Take care, everyone. <laughs>